Good evening, dear friends and family. We hope you are well, hope you are good. And um, I'm so excited that we are actually sharing the word on this platform. The Lord has pressed this word in my heart and I would love to share with you. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless us and is going to encourage us. Can we just start with a short prayer quickly? Father, we thank you for this time as we speak your word. We pray for your wisdom. We pray for your direction. Holy Spirit, direct us now in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to talk quickly about the power of the word in prayer. The power of the word in prayer. Um, you know, we know that the word of God is important in our lives. We know that the word of God, in fact, is the center of our salvation. Now, how does the word helps us when we pray? In fact, when we look at Jesus being tempted by the enemy, Jesus begins to quote scriptures. He says, it is written, the man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shalt worship no other God. It is written, thou shalt not test the Lord your God. It's, it looks like the word is key in responding to challenges in life also is key in prayer. So I want us to, to look at the uh, subject, the power of prayer, the power of the word in prayer. Now we know that the word of God is a language, is God's language, number one. So which means if I pray, I need to speak. So when you are praying, you are communicating with God, you are talking to God. So you need to communicate with God in a language that he understands. So the word of God, it's his language. The word of God is his will. You know, we know about the will when somebody has passed on. They write a will to say, this is what I'm leaving for my children, for my family. That will, it's almost as it's impossible to change it when it's a will of someone who has passed on. Because whatever they desire, whatever they say, as soon as it's read out, it, it it's it's basically... That is the wish, you know, of a deceased person. So it's the will. So when you look at the word of God, look at it as something that is final. It's what God has said for his people, for us. So when you are praying, use the will of God. Use, claim that the will of God says this. The will of God says that about me. The will, so that's how the, the word of God is the will of God. Hallelujah. Number three. The word gives us success. I always find myself asking, but where in the Bible does where it says God wants me to succeed? In fact, there are many verses. But one of my favorite is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. To give you an expected end. Other version to say to prosper you. I like that part that says expected end. I need to expect something. I need to reach somewhere. And then uh, God helps me to reach there. So it's an expected end that I have. I expect to marry. I expect you to have a business. I expect you to start a, 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 a ministry and grow. I expect, I expect growth in my life. And God wants me to have that. Joshua 1 verse 8, of course, we know this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but that I shall meditate on it day and night to observe, to do everything according uh, to what's written in it. Then you will prosper and you will have good success. Wow. God wants you to prosper. There are three levels of prosperity. You prosper in your physical body. You prosper emotionally in your heart. And you prosper financially. And good success, which means whatever you start, you will finish it. Very important. Now, uh, the Holy Spirit performs the word. Now, every time when you want the Holy Spirit to move, he moves because he's following or he's directed by the word of God. So every time when you pray and you want the Holy Spirit to be involved, the word is the password. Hallelujah. Every time when you use the word of God, it's like a password. It's like when somebody has given you uh, 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 money and they say you can withdraw it in a machine. Now, 
All you need is a password. The money is there. The means of getting the money is there, but yeah, the password is what's going to uh, give you access to the money. So the word of God is like a password that gives us access to our answered prayer. I hope you're still with me. You know, every time, if you say, let there be, if whatever you are saying, it's in the word of God, it comes to pass. You know, when you say, let there be this, let there be that, as long as it's in the will of God, as long as it's, it's, it's the word of God, it will come to pass. Now, I've been asking myself as a believer, why some prayers are not answered? Why sometimes we pray for things and they don't come to pass? In fact, I'm asking myself so that I can avoid praying for things that will actually, that I have no chance for them. Then I began to search the scriptures. Number one, I want you to get this thing down. Why some prayers are not answered? Let me give you simple five reasons. Five reasons. Why some prayers are not answered. Number one, some prayers are not answered because it's not yet time. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 There's a season In life there's time for everything There's a season to sow There's a season to harvest Alright There is time for everything It's not yet time Number two Their prayers are not answered Because they are delayed by Satan Daniel 10 verse 12 Daniel was praying Seeking answers Seeking knowledge from the Lord And only on the 21 day that the angel finally got to him and said, your prayer was answered. Day you number one, the first day you prayed, your prayer was answered. But there was a delay in the spirit. The prince of Persia, now we know that's a demonic spirit, hindered your answered prayer. So some prayers are hindered by Satan. So you, you, you should not stop praying. You should keep pressing. You should need, you keep pressing until you receive your answer. Number three, why some prayers are not answered? Lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 verse 6 says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. I always like to make an example about how I, uh, 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 um, after finishing my grade 12, my metric, I could not go to college or university because I did not have funding. So I decided to go and work in a restaurant as a waiter. I worked for seven years, washing dishes and making coffee, only to discover on the seventh year that there was a bursary for business student, business management student that was available in the institution where I was trying to get into. This bursary, this scholarship was available seven years ago. All I had to do was to do a little bit of research. So I suffered for seven years, not because God did not love me, not because the devil was delaying me, but because I did not have a knowledge. So some prayers are not answered because of lack of knowledge. Number four, why other prayers are not answered? Because of lack of faith. Lack of faith. Now I want to give you just three points that are under lack of faith. When you, you see, when you are praying now, when you look at 1 Timothy 2 verse 8, if we read it on Amplified, 1 Timothy 2 verse 8, it says, Therefore, I want the man in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger, without disputes, without quarreling, without doubt in their minds. So when we say lack of faith is when you have doubt or when you've got quarrel, anger in your heart. Your prayer is not answered because you have quarrel in your heart. You have anger in your heart. Same also when we talk about lack of faith. Some prayers are not answered because you have complained. You, you are complaining and you are murmuring in your heart. Numbers 11 verse 1. The Lord was displeased by the Israelite when they complained. See, it shows a lack of faith. Also, with a lack of faith, you are asking for something but with the wrong heart, which means you have a lustful mentality or motives. James 4 verse 3. You ask and you receive not because you ask a mist that you may consume it upon your last, which means you want to show off. 
There's a lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and a pride of life. These are the types of lust you, you are asking, but your motives are not good. You want a certain car, but it's not about the car. It's about showing the people. So then your prayer gets delayed. I hope you are still with me. Also, under, under faith, lack of faith, you are asking, but you have an unforgiving heart. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. If you, if, you, if, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, your father also will not forgive you. Wow. So it is very important. Now, let's look at number five. Why prayers are not answered? So we said number one, prayers are not answered because it's not time. Are not, uh, prayers are not answered because you are delayed by Satan. Because you lack knowledge, because of lack of faith. And number five now, some prayers are not answered because it's incorrect prayers. When I, when I received this, I said, Holy Spirit, please, you need to teach me this. They are incorrect prayers. You know, how many of you have ever called someone, you are sure you dial the right number, only to find a strange voice, which means somehow, somehow you missed the number by one at the end. Or how many of you have tried to put a password on your app or on your phone or whatever on your gadget, and then it says wrong password, but you're sure you put the right password. It happens sometimes when you are praying that you are just, you didn't get it right. So they are wrong prayers. And I want to give you quickly uh, before we pray and close what are incorrect prayers that makes us experience unanswered prayer or that hinders our prayers john 14 verse 13 it says and whatsoever he shall ask in my name that i will do this is jesus christ talking now that the father may be glorified in the son if you shall ask anything in my name I will do it. John 14 from 13 to 14. Jesus says, I want to glorify my father. Please ask me for something. So why then do we have incorrect prayers? Okay, quickly write this thing down. The first incorrect prayer that we normally do is praying without the name of Jesus. Praying without the name of Jesus. We must ask every everything in the name of Jesus. Do not pray to other gods. Do not pray to ancestors. Do not pray on, on any. Your faith must be in the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You are asking God and you are using the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus has the authority. Philip Philippians 2 verse 9, it says, Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven of things on earth of things under the earth so the name of Jesus is key now so if you pray and you did not use the name of Jesus Christ it's an incarnate prayer another incarnate prayer is praying without the word of God we are talking about what? We are talking about the power of the word in prayer. If you are praying without the word of God, so you cannot pray for somebody to die. That's not what God is. God wants people to live. God wants people to be saved. God wants people to succeed. You cannot pray for the opposite. It will not come to pass. It's incorrect prayer. First John 5 verse 14, praying without the word of God. And this is the confident that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, oh, according to his word, he hears us. So when you are praying against the word, the Lord does not hear you. When you are praying according to the word, the Lord is listening. Pray according to the word of God. You must pray according to the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me give you also another incorrect prayer. Okay. So number one, we said what? Is praying without the name of Jesus. Is number two, praying without the word. Now number three, praying without the Holy Spirit. 
Romans 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmity. For we know not what, to, what we should pray for, uh, for as we ought. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings and which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit is your prayer partner. So when you are praying, if you want your prayer to be correct, you need to invite the Holy Spirit. Walk with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you need to pray in tongues. Now, I know there's a bit of confusion. I've heard someone say, no, not all of us can pray in tongues. Now, listen, there is a difference between the gift of tongues and praying in tongues. Okay? They are the gift of tongues that you find is called operational gift, where there's collective of nine gifts. The gift of praying in tongues is when you are praying without knowing you are, you are praying the language that exists somewhere. So I might be like a Zulu person here. I'm praying in Mandarin and I'm in China and somebody hears me very well, but I don't know. I think I'm just praying. That is a gift of tongues. Praying in tongues uh, is just praying. It sounds gibberish. And you just praying as the Lord allows you, as the Lord leads you. So all of us, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, we can pray in tongues. But there are people who have the gift of tongues. So somebody would say, oh, uh, uh, are, we, are we all prophets? Are, are, are we all apostles? Are, are we all having a gift of tongues? Are we all speaking? Listen, there's a difference between a gift of tongues and praying in tongues. So Oh, when you are going to pray with the Holy Spirit, you need to walk by faith and pray in tongues. Allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you and minister to you. Amen. So the, an incorrect prayer is praying without the Holy Spirit. Number four, praying without obedience. Another form of incorrect prayer is praying without obedience. John 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Obey my commandments. Now, you need to humble yourself and obey. What did God say to you? Now, as you are praying about this, what did God say to you? Has God told you to stop doing something? Has God told you to be kind to people? Has God told you to give to someone who is poor in the street, give to the needy? Has God told you uh, to do something for your family? Obey. Prayer without obedience is just incorrect. It will not work for you. Now, listen, the last one, number five. An incorrect prayer, when you dishonor your wife. When you dishonor your wife. When I got this verse, I said, whoa, every married man should understand this verse. Every man who's about to get married, understand what you're about to get into. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. I'm going to read it on Amplified. In the same way, you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, with great gentleness and tact, and with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship, as with someone physically weaker, since she is a woman. Show her honor and respect as a fellow her in the grace of life. So that, listen to this now, so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. If you disrespect your wife, your prayer is, is hindered. If you dishonor your wife, your prayers are, is already hindered. So if you have a wife, but you are proposing other people, you are in danger of having unanswered prayer, hindered prayers. I hope you're with me there. Very important for husbands. Of course, with women, you must submit to your husband. You are still under authority. Hallelujah. So it is very important for you to understand that the power of the word when we are using the word, when we are speaking the word, our prayers are answered. Hallelujah. It's very important. Now, I want to close now.
Now, every time when we are using the word, prayer with the word gives us access to the Holy Spirit. I've already said that. He performs the word of God. So the Holy Spirit is just waiting for the scriptures to come out of your mouth. Then he performs them. When you pray, prayer brings the anointing. So the prayer with the word brings the anointing to break the yoke. So it's not about how loud you are. It's not about, you don't have to sweat. Just speak the word. It brings the anointing. Prayer with the word brings the power to preach, to heal, to deliver. Okay? Prayer with the word gives passion for intercession. Okay? So when you want to stand in a gap and pray for other people, you need to use the scriptures. Don't, you, you cannot uh, 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 say things based on what you wish. You cannot be saying, oh, I'm praying for that, uh, praying for somebody's car to be yours, praying for somebody's uh, house to be yours. And then you said, I'm interceding. I'm just claiming it. No, pray according to the word. When you pray with the word, you will be refreshed and the burdens will be lifted. Hallelujah. When you pray with the word, prophetic anointing will come upon you. You will declare Things will come to pass. You will actually prophesy over your life. Hallelujah. When you're praying with the word, favor and protection is upon you. Because you are using God's language, you'll have a stronger relationship with God. When you pray using your word, you will experience answered prayers. Every time when you are praying. When you use the word in prayer, you will have discernment. And you will have wisdom. So now, discernment, of course, is supernatural way to distinguish between evil good and evil you would you would have the ability to distinguish what is wrong and what is right that is discernment and you'll have wisdom wisdom is to supernatural uh, understanding of what to do so every time when you use the word you will be a person who know how to solve problem last one when you pray with the word you will receive boldness i want to just pray with you right now and I want to encourage you that as you are standing and then as you are praying, know that there is a season and your season is now. Know that no more delays. Your time is now. Know that no more lack of knowledge. Your, 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 your time of understanding is now. No, no more lack of faith. Today, faith is coming upon you. And from today, you're going to pray correct prayers. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you as you are teaching us today that we need to use the word of God when we are praying. I give you the glory, Father. I give you the praise. Bless somebody right now who's listening to this message. Elevate them in Jesus' name. Give them, let them understand the time has come for answered prayers. Amen. Now, if you're listening to this prayer and you say, I'm not born again, that is the way it begins. You must give your life to Christ. You must be a child of God. This is a family thing. So when you have given your life to God, then you can begin to pray and ask for, for, for things and they will be answered. So if you say, I'm not born again, or I was born again, but I backslid it, I stopped working with God, I want to give you an opportunity to come back to God. I want to give you a chance to get your name to be written in a book of life. I want to give you a chance to reconcile with the creator, with the living God. All you have to do is to pray after me. Just simply confess with your mouth, believe with your heart. Just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you are the son of God. You died and you rose again for my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Today I belong to you. In Jesus name. Amen. Now listen, if you have prayed that prayer, you are born again, you are a child of God, please send us an inbox, contact us. There's a book, we want to give you a free gift called Now You Are Born Again. It will help you with the next 100 days of a believer. We'd love to connect with you. May God bless you. Continue to follow us on our social media. Continue to follow us on all our platform. May God richly bless you and we look forward to see you in person very soon. As we stand in prayer, may you receive answered prayer in your life.
Amen.